10 past 8. Good morning. Uh, American Magic has recovered from its um, dramatic capsize and will soon take on Luna Rossa in the Prada Cup semi-finals today. But has the time speed off the water put them completely on the back foot in all of this? Joining us now from the waterfront is America's Cup veteran Ken Reid. Uh, welcome to the programme, Ken. Good to have you on. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. And what's going to happen today? What's the, what are the conditions like, firstly, and um, what do you think is going to happen today? Well, <clears throat> the amazing story here, obviously, is that one of the two major powerhouses of this America's Cup, but really in America's Cup history, are going home this, uh, after this weekend. Either uh, the challenger of record, Mr. Bertelli, in the Prada Design House, or the New York Yacht Club. So it's actually phenomenal. It, it feels like it just started about a couple days ago. And here, one of these big teams is going home after a best out of seven knockout series. So it's really actually an incredible weekend for sailing. I was, I was going to say, um, isn't it too soon to go home? Has, haven't things just kicked off? Surely there must be more <laughs> sailing in it for, for one of these teams. But that's the truth. You pack things up, it goes in the container and away you go. Well, I have a feeling given the way the rest of the world is right now, nobody's going to be leaving your pretty little island here very, very soon. I, I can tell you that. But it's... Uh, it is shocking to think that it, it did. It just started. We just started. And, and I think that when they go back and look at the scheduling of this event, there are going to be some questions asked over time as to whether this was done properly for the challengers really to pick the best person because, again, they're just starting. Yeah, I wonder that myself, actually. I, I just, um, it's not like corners have been cut. Has COVID had anything to do with it? I mean, has, has the COVID environment had anything to do with how we feel about that? No, I, I don't think so. It's really about uh, th these these decisions are made literally years ago. Like these programs, they're started. You know, th these programs all started three years ago. Imagine that, and it comes down to one weekend. It comes down to one mistake. One of these boats was sinking last week. Uh, the other boat has had, you know, really kind of suspect results because it, it's kind of deemed to be a light air monster. So really. Neither of these teams are perfect right now, and, and the big question mark, of course, is the Americans and whether that boat is going to be in one piece and if they've worked all the gremlins out of it. You know, it's really going to be, it's, it's fascinating. Honestly, nobody knows. Really, nobody has any idea what's going to happen this be, weekend. Yeah, because there hasn't, as you rightly point out, there hasn't been enough sailing to, to, to work it out. And, I just, and, and the teams are still working out what's going on with these boats and on the water themselves. I think it's a bit of a shame, actually. But anyway, Dean Barker, can he do it? He's in his own home waters. Let's be, let's be clear about that. This is not a foreign. This is not a foreign challenge in many ways. I mean, Dean is a local. Yeah. Well, listen. I know Dean has caused some heat over the years, but there's really he's one of the very elite sailors in the world, for not just in this event in the world. So. I don't really have a problem. Uh, I don't think Dean's going to have a problem. I think he's going to jump right back in. You know, if you're if you're a Formula One driver and you hit the wall, and as long as everybody's okay, you hop back in the car and take back, take off again. I, I think Dean's in that position. I, I, I don't think you're going to see any hesitation from him. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to see a, a, a somebody who's out there to try to prove a point today. I think. There's obviously been a lot of talk about the challenges, and we've seen a lot of the challenges recently. We saw a little bit of Team New Zealand, but has anyone been keeping an eye on actually how Team New Zealand is looking through all of this? Because they've still got to be honing their skills as well, don't they? Uh, do not worry even the least about Emirates Team New Zealand right now. They have their new foils that just came on. They still have lots of toys in the in the pen that they're that, that they're putting on this boat. They did not show everything. I'm convinced of it uh, during that Christmas regatta. And uh, I think after that capsize during practice racing, uh, they got a little talking to, and they came out the next day like fierce, like you would expect Emirates Team New Zealand to come out. So. I would not worry about it. They're still thought to be the boat to beat. There's no question about that. And Jimmy Spittle, um, what, what's his form like? What, do you, what are we making of him? Well, uh, again, it, it comes down to he might be going home after this weekend, technically in last place. Here's a person who has won two and lost in the final. He's been in the finals. He's been in the America's Cup for the last three versions of the Cup. He might be going home this weekend. He might he might be on vacation. So the, so 
It's really, it's another one of the bylines. It's another one of the stories that is just fascinating. This weekend is dripping with suspense, and I think not just the sailing world, but the sporting world is really looking forward to seeing how this one's going to turn out. Have we done well in terms of organizing this? When I say this, have we done well, and we've already criticized the, the, the short, the shortness of this of this Challenger series, but uh, is, there, is there a crowd in town? I mean, have people turned up? Is there a, I know it's COVID is a huge big cloud in the background, but is there a huge interest in this? Well, there's huge interest around the world because uh, I think the television ratings are terrific, because, fortunately for us, because uh, nobody else has anything to watch. So many sport events around the world are, are shut off or are shut down. Uh, it's really people are kind of confined in their homes around the world. Now, from a tourism standpoint, is that helpful for the local uh, economy? Probably not perfect, but I can tell you that Kiwis have come out in droves. The amount of boats out on the water has been hugely impressive. Uh, down here in the viaduct, it's really, they've done a great job of setting this place up. Uh, you know, for, for me, for being a foreigner, for being an American, it's a privilege and an honor to be here. It's a shame that more aren't, but uh, you can, you can for sure know that the rest of the world is watching and watching very, very carefully. What we'll do is we'll hang on to this thing for another four years and we'll do it all, do it all again in four years without COVID, hopefully. Well, How, how's that for a deal? They're going to do it sooner. They're going to do it sooner than that, I think. If I, I, I would imagine if the Kiwis win, they got this great boat, they have this great venue. There's no reason not to turn this around as quick as they possibly can. So that's just my guess. Ken, just on Jimmy Spittle, you know the Kiwis better than anyone. Never take Jimmy Spittle for granted. But can I go just a little bit personal on you? Because I read that when you started out sailing, you didn't actually like it. But you remember a fundamental change <laughs> in your life when you went from loving to win to hating to lose. Tell us about the difference right. in that and that moment. Uh, I think it was, it became my profession. I think it was a, a, a difference between uh, being my kind of my passion to my profession. And when that happens, I think there's a switch inside of you. Uh, I, you know, I was sailing, I've sailed, I've, I've sailed around the world three times. I've, I've skippered Dennis Connors' uh, cup campaign twice here in, in 2000 and 2003. After a while, um, you don't get up in the morning thinking, I want to go sailing because I love to go sailing. You get up in the morning, I'm going sailing because it's my job. And I think when that happened for me, it, it became a little more personal and a little more, um, uh, yeah, hating, hating to lose. I, I didn't really care about hoisting the trophy anymore. I just didn't want to see anybody else hoist it. I guess that, that, that's the point. Just a, a question on uh, these boats' ability to be fast in all ears. Um, because we hear, you know, some some are good in, in light ears, some aren't so good in light ears. How difficult is it to come up with a boat? Is it possible to have a boat that's an all-rounder? Or do they have to gear them up for a specific um, wind condition? Well, there's no question that uh, everybody aims to be an all-arounder. The problem with a brand new, uh, a brand new uh, design like this, a brand new concept, is the fact that uh, Nobody really knows where they're at early in the stages. I think next time, next time around, if there's another version of the America's Cups with, with these boats in them, you'll see everybody start coming much closer together. Uh, wing sizes, for example, the wings underwater, the, the, those will start coming closer together. Everybody will see what the next generation, the last generation of fast foils look like. And when that happens, things get a little more even, Stephen, across the board. But this time around, for sure, we're seeing a wide disparity because it's new, it's brand new. Nobody really knows. And, uh, and until we find that second generation, I, I think that's when things will start evening out. Hey, good stuff, Ken. Really appreciate having you on the program today. Welcome to New Zealand. I hope you're having a great time, and uh, we will catch up with you again. America's Cup veteran and skipper, of course, Ken Reid. Appreciate your time on the program, mate. Okay, we're 19.